Good morning and welcome to Trinity Anglican Church in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. It is good to be with you this Sunday, this the Sunday, the reign of Christ, as we celebrate the reign of Christ in our lives, in our individual lives and in our corporate lives as a church. So welcome to those from our parish, from those in the broader community and around the globe. Got your hymn book, pull it out. Hymn number 383, Jesus Shall Reign. Hymn number 383, Jesus Shall Reign, verses 1, 2, and 4. We acknowledge and give thanks for the land on which Trinity Anglican Church sits. Creator, you made all people of every land. It is our responsibility to give thanks and respect those who first occupied this land we are upon. We give thanks to the Haudenosaunee of the Six Nations of the Grand River and are within the territory of the Neutral and Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples, the first people of this land. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, 
whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King. Grant that the peoples of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his gentle and loving rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We welcome Marilyn Parkinson Crump as she leads us in the psalm and our first reading from the Old Testament. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And together we pray. God our Father, you have created us as your people and you sustain us with your hand. Help us always to give you thanks, for you alone are worthy of thanksgiving and praise and honor, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34, 11 to 16 and 20 to 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on the rich pasture of the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you have your hymn books out, get them out. It's hymn 109, verses 1, 2, and 4.
Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me and for me. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, in whose name we say, Amen. I have to confess, each time I drive up to a corner where I see someone with a sign that says, I'm hungry, help me. I'm homeless, I have no job, help me. This piece of scripture comes to mind, at least part of it does. Whatsoever you do to the least of these, you do to me. And I don't know about you, I have to confess, not every time when I'm stopped at those corners do I give to the least of these. You see, in our society, we see them as the least. So does Jesus. I have to say, when I don't put my window down and offer them help, I avoid eye contact. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed because I'm a Christian, because I believe in Jesus, and I believe in the will of Jesus, the reign of Jesus, and I want him to reign in my heart. And I justify my not doing anything that, well, I couldn't possibly give to everybody who asked for help. How is it possible? There may be truth in that, but there may not. It may mean I forego Starbucks today, so that they can have Starbucks. What's wrong with that? Maybe it's I forgo ordering in supper, so maybe they have supper today. This comes to mind in light of the scripture because it causes me to think about what is the kingdom that Jesus, who is the king of, like? Well, we have from Ezekiel what it's like. God, in the person of Jesus Christ, is the shepherd of that kingdom. And God seeks to shepherd us 
and show us the way to be. And yes, we will have those hard moments. And I had to stand before God as I prepared for today and said, yes, there are times I do ignore the hungry. I see them. I see the homeless, but I don't do anything. I don't take action to bring an end to homelessness. Am I any better than those I look at and I point to and say, why aren't they doing something? I'm not. But what I do know is I come before God and I acknowledge where I fall short of the glory of God. And I ask God to be with me, that Christ reigns within my heart so that what I do reflects the teachings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but most especially the shepherd who came, who lived, died, and rose from the dead that we may have life, each and every one of us. And each and every one of us has a responsibility to ensure that each and every one of us has a life, a life abundant. So when I fall short of the glory of God, and I think we all do, I don't think God wants to shame us. We might, we might take that from this scripture today, might we? Because Lord knows I don't want to be a goat. I don't want to be the one at the left hand of God. I want to be at the right hand of God. But the truth be told, we human beings don't get it perfect. And that's why when we hear the words of the prophet Ezekiel, God, God's self says, I will come after those who stray. I will bring them back. So if I stray from the teachings of Jesus, what I know is I have God who will bring me back. God makes that promise. God doesn't say he'll kick me out. Instead, if I stray, God will bring me back. If I get lost in my fears, my doubts, the noise of the world, God will bring me back because that is God's desire. In the world we live in, I wish Jesus was here so I could ask questions, but Jesus isn't here other than in spirit. I still ask questions, but what I discover is God, through the people of God, brings people into our lives to help us to better understand as human beings how to live the kingdom of God. Two such people in my life, my life I don't know them personally. One lived a long time before I was ever born. The other lived during my lifetime and has since been made a saint. St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi came from a family of great wealth and power. But Christ entered into his life, into his heart, and it was the reign of Christ that, that Francis wanted to live. And so he gave up his earthly possessions. He entered into a life of poverty by earthly standards, but into a life of great wealth in the kingdom of God, wealth of gifts, abundance of grace and mercy, healing, redemption, salvation. And Francis lived his life for Christ, and he brought others to Christ. He inspired them by his faithfulness to the teachings of Christ. And one of the things I love about what St. Francis has taught us, he teaches us to always preach the gospel. Use words if you have to. So he was one that when he saw the hungry, he fed them. When he saw those who were naked, he clothed them. When he saw those who were homeless, he found shelter for them. And he has inspired generations after him to do likewise. St. Francis of Assisi inspires me, gives me hope that even as a human being, that you and I, we can, by the grace of God, by a love for God and Jesus Christ, we can rise up and be the kingdom here and now. The other person I was speaking of is Mother Teresa, who is now Saint Teresa. Disciples are those who follow Mother Teresa, follow. They've been interviewed, and they are asked about her. What's she like? And why do you follow her? How would you describe her? And some of the things that come out is consistent. What they knew about Mother Teresa Saint Teresa, was that when she fed the hungry, when she clothed the naked, 
when she sheltered the homeless and she taught others to do the very same things, what she believed and what she taught them to believe was she was doing this to Jesus Christ himself because she lived this gospel passage today where Jesus says, whatsoever you do to the least of these, you do to me. When I thought about that and think about that with regards to Mother Teresa, I see it is possible. Now, they're both saints, and I was about to say Francis and, and Teresa aren't saints, but they are. But they aren't saints in the, in the way of being perfect. They are humans, and from time to time, they fell short. There's no doubt about that, because they're humans. They had doubts, they had questions. They sometimes didn't do everything that they ought to have done. But they also knew they had a God who would forgive them. A God who would see them through eyes of love and grace and mercy. Why do I look to these people? I look to these people and other people in my life so that I can see how do we live out what Jesus is asking us. Is it even humanly possible when I think about me avoiding eye contact with someone at a street corner? It is possible. I can't promise from this day forward that every time I see someone at the corner, I'll roll down my window and give them something. But I'll do my best to be better at it. Because I need to be like Mother Teresa. That when I see that person standing at the corner, with a sign that says, I'm unemployed, I'm homeless, I'm hungry, can you help me? I'm seeing Christ. I am seeing Jesus himself. And what would I do encountering Jesus? Nothing less than reaching out and offering food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, clothing for the naked. For Jesus calls me to that. Now, it might be something as small as giving a loony. It might be giving a gift card to the grocery store or to Tim Hortons or to Starbucks. But I can do something. I can if I allow Jesus to reign in my heart, and you can when you allow Jesus to reign in your heart. Do these things knowing that what you do to the least of these in our community, you are doing to Jesus himself. These are words that inspire. These are words that inform. So if you come when we are at that place when we have communion in our church again, I don't ask your pedigree. I don't even ask if you're baptized. I believe if you're coming to receive Christ, I see before me Christ, and I will give to you as Christ would give. Come to Christ. Let him reign in your heart so that he may guide you, that he may shepherd you, that he may care for you. And who knows, maybe you and I are the homeless ones. Maybe you and I are the strangers. It might not be the people we're thinking about, that the shepherd has come for. In his name, amen. Let us share in the Apostles' Creed as we confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, 
that the shepherd may gather all people's in, leading us and guiding us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our bishops and for all the clergy and people, that they allow Jesus to reign in their hearts, that we turn ourselves to the King of Kings and we follow his ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, that they too may follow the lead of the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, but also for those who have lost their faith, for those who are lost, for those who have strayed. May they feel the reign of Jesus Christ in their lives, bringing them back to the flock. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, and today we especially pray for David, Lisa, Marita, Henry, Jenny, Dominic, Paul, Charlotte, Carolyn, Rob, Christine, Andrew, Catherine, Laura, Mary Kay, Shannon, Glennis, Dan, Lynn, Paul, Tom, Heather, John, Donna, Steve, Heather, Susan, Sylvia, Joe, Kay, Evelyn, Lynn, David, Donna, Lorraine, Brian, Cheryl and her family, Ailey and John. We lift up the names of these people, some who are part of our parish family, but many who are part of God's family, who have connected with us here at Trinity and have asked for us to pray for them. For prisoners and captives, for their safety, health, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for all who have died, today we especially remember Norm Shell, in whose memory these flowers are given to the glory of God in thanksgiving by his wife, Marion Shell. We pray rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and that light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the departed in your mercy rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God, to you, O Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. In gathering all of our prayers into one, we pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I invite you to remember, we have not been to church. We are the church. Let us go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pull out your hymn books. Hymn number 379, 
Rejoice, the Lord is King, verses 1, 2, and 5. Hymn number 379. <laughs> Just a couple announcements. First of all, thank you to Brent, Megan, Holly, and Stephanie for their gift of music again today. What a gift it is. It lifts our spirits. For those of us who are here in the building, we are a little bit jealous of those of you at home who are able to sing out, and we're glad that you do. As of next Sunday, because we enter into the red stage uh, here in our uh, region of Waterloo, Next Sunday, there will only be five, permitted, uh, five people permitted in for our worship service. And so those who are in our pews this morning, unfortunately, you will not be able to join us as of tomorrow. We have to reduce our numbers. And we do this to take care of each other. This, too, for me, is a way that we can show that the reign of Christ is in our hearts, that in this time, it is ever so important that we take care of each other in the most vulnerable of our society. And so to this end, our parish is going to pull back with only five of us, five of us in worship, properly distanced and masked so that we take care of each other who are in this building. Do the same in your lives. Wear your masks, keep your distance, Wash your hands. Minimize your uh, involvement with people who aren't from your immediate family that you spend time with so that we can flatten this curve, that we can keep people safe, that we can live out that commandment of Jesus of loving our neighbor. Pray for us in this time in the leadership in the church. Some tough decisions have to be made. But we have within our hearts a desire to care for the people of God in a way that is faithful to God, that is inspired by the love of God. For those of you who have email, you should have received your link. For those of you who receive it by mail, it's on its way. If you haven't received it, you should receive it this week. And it sets out a whole bunch of things that are happening in our lives. You see, COVID hasn't shut everything down. It hasn't canceled everything. What it has done is changed some things. So when you get your link, read it and see the ways that people are responding to COVID-19, the way we, the parish, are responding to COVID-19, with the assurance that it has not, will not cancel God. It will not, cannot cancel Christmas. It will be different. There's no doubt about that. But starting next Sunday, 
the first Sunday of Advent, we are looking ahead to the celebration of the birth of Christ. We will not ever stop having this celebration. So join with us in worship on the four Sundays of Advent as we bring you a special, special message through time, through music, through the story of God, that we may, as a people of hope, live in hope. Again, thank you for being with us this morning. We look forward to the day when it will be safe for us all to be back in our church building. In the meantime, be well. Thank <laughs> you.